So, we will come again in my course uh, Power Electronics Application in Power System. Uh, this is another lecture. So, in the last lecture, I discuss uh, this uh, different types of static bar compensator, different types of static bar compensator, and I said that there are two types of uh, static bar compensator one is uh, one which absorb the reactive power another is one which can uh, deliver or produce the reactive power. Of course, so one is inductive type of reactive power another is capacitive type of reactive power okay. and in the, this particular course we will discuss all this uh, different type for example, this uh, TCR thyristor control reactor which is an uh, which is one type of reactive power compensator or uh, which is one type of uh, static bar compensator I discuss in very detail ok. And I, I in the last lecture I discuss this FC TCR which is a combination of fixed capacitor and this TCR ok. So, the advantage of FC TCR over the normal TCR uh, is that in FC TCR since we have a fixed capacitor bank. So, we have a flexibility of having reactive power delivery and reactive power consumption both right. So, therefore, uh, this V i characteristics of this fixed capacitor T C R is having this uh, flexibility of non-zero production limit. Whereas, in normal T S R uh, normal T C R was having a zero production limit which I discuss ok. But the disadvantage of having this fixed capacitor is that there will be a circulating current which will always flow uh, in between this fixed capacitor and this TCR when they are operating. So, therefore, there would be some additional losses ok. So, to alleviate that uh, we, we need some switchable capacitor ok. It is because of the presence of fixed capacitor there would be some circulating current which will always flow through the fixed capacitor unit and the TCR unit ok. To alleviate that we need a switchable capacitor and uh, as we have seen there are two types of switchable capacitor one is mechan one is mechanically switched capacitor another is thyristor switched capacitor ok. Now, when we have a mechanical switched capacitor coupled with this TCR uh, this thyristor control reactor then the unit would be called as MSC TCR that is mechanically switched capacitor thyristor control reactor. So, let me discuss uh, briefly what it is actually. So, so in today's uh, presentation I will first start with this mechanically switched capacitor thyristor control reactor ok. So, it can be acronymed as MSC mechanical switched capacitor TCR that is thyristor control reactor ok. Now, we know the basic operating principle of a thyristor control uh, reactor that is why I started the discussion of SVC with this TCR only. So, therefore, it would be easy for us to understand what is MSC TCR ok. Remember this M the basic goal of developing this MSC TCR is to have a switchable capacitor instead of having a fixed capacitor ok. So, therefore, the configuration the single line diagram single line diagram for this MSC TCR is something like this. Okay. 
we will be having a bus this is suppose representing the bus at which this uh, whole unit would be placed ok. So, uh, higher MSCTCR unit would be placed then we will be having a step down transformer as we discussed to step down the voltage level to uh, a much reduced voltage level than the transmission level voltage. Then in this low voltage bus we will be having uh, mechanically switched capacitor like this. So, this is this is uh, this mechanically switched capacitor ok. So, normally they are of identical rating depending upon the number of units we will be having in parallel. Then we will also have this LC filter. You know that uh, purpose of this LC filter is to filter out the harmonics some of the dominant harmonics generated by this TCR and then we will be having normal TCR unit. Here we have a bidirectional switch like this. Here we will have a bidirectional switch, here we will have a reactor ok. So, therefore, this unit is this switched capacitor, switched capacitor unit, this is LC filter. What is the purpose of the LC filter? To filter out the harmonics generated by TCR operation and this is the TCR thyristor control reactor. So, this is the inductance, this is bidirectional switch and this symbol represents mechanical switch or circuit breaker. Mechanical switch or circuit breaker. Okay. So, this is a very simple construction, constructional detail or single line diagram of MSC TCR. Okay. Now, the only difference of this with the fixed capacitor TCR is that we have a number of mechanical switch or circuit breakers which can uh, turn on and turn off of these capacitors whenever they will be required uh, that is the difference. Okay. So, the advantage of this type of configuration is number 1 MSC TCR uses mechanical switch or circuit breaker. to turn on and turn off the capacitors. So, thereby it will elevate uh, the, the problem when that uh, we have a system a power system. Uh, op is operating at light load condition and thereby there is a creation of over voltage. So, we what we can do? We can disconnect uh, this capacitor so that we there is a excessive uh, reactive power available in the network cannot be increased further. So, that the presence of this, this capacitor uh, during this uh, light loading operating condition of the power system cannot further uh, enhance the over voltage. So, we can do so. Similarly, we can turn on this capacitor bank when the uh, system is operating at peak load condition, whenever system requires for. Eventually, this TCR is as you know because we have this thyristor switches. So, this 
two thyristors already we have. So, they can uh, be turned on and turned off whenever is required and uh, uh, during this peak loading condition we can fully turn off this TCR unit and we can fully turn on the capacitor unit. So, that we can uh, produce uh, and we can inject certain amount of VAR uh, to the network. So, that this under voltage due to this uh, peak load or uh, very high load condition can be mitigated. Okay. So, this is one of the advantage. Okay. Then the second advantage is that MSC TCR reduces the energy loss or power loss due to the circulating current current as in FCTCR. So, this is already I discuss one of the main advantages is of this MSCTCR is to alleviate the circulating current as in the fixed capacitor TCR. Okay. Then the third advantage is regarding the capital cost of the mechanical switch is certainly lower than the, uh, the semiconductor switch. So, therefore, the capital cost of mechanical switch is lower than the semiconductor switches. So, therefore, between these two switchable uh, capacitor option one is TSC that is thyristor switched capacitor another is mechanical switch capacitor that MSC TCR is advantageous as far as the cost or capital cost is concerned. So, these are the advantages. Now, there are many disadvantages as well for this configuration. What are the disadvantages? Let us see. Number 1, the first, dis disad uh, first disadvantage is that capacitor switching, capacitor switching That means, turning on and turning off the capacitors creates transients. Okay. So, and that, that is one of the disadvantages as compared to FCTCR. In FCTCR, we are not uh, doing any switching operation uh, of the capacitor. Therefore, uh, we are basically avoiding the transient uh, happening uh, due to the capacitor uh, switching. Okay. So, this is one of the major issues in case of this TSC that is thyristor switched capacitor, okay. so th which I will come to that a couple of minutes after. Okay. The second bot uh, another uh, disadvantage of bottleneck is that the mechanical switch or the circuit breakers breakers have very limited lifespan okay and uh, this uh, the life of this mechanical switch or circuit breaker would be reduced uh, based upon the total number of operation of the turning on and turning off. Okay. So, there are some finite number of uh, turning on and turning off operation is possible for a mechanical switch and if we do it very frequently then it life uh, time would be reduced that is one of one of the bottlenecks of having this mechanical switch. 
So, these are the advantage and disadvantage for this MSCTCR. The characteristic wise uh, the VI characteristics of this MSCTCR is similar to fixed capacitor TCR, but we have discrete this control range in this uh, uh, maximum production time. So, this I am, I am going to discuss whenever I will discuss TSC thyristor switched capacitor because uh, in principle its VI characteristic wise or uh, uh, this VSBC, ISBC characteristic wise MSC TCR and TSC TCR are similar. So, I am going to discuss this operating characteristics of uh, TSC TCR in very detail whenever I will cover that. So, therefore, I am just keeping this MSC TCR uh, VI characteristic, but one should understand that the VI characteristics or voltage current characteristics of this uh, MSC TCR would be similar to TSC TCR. Okay. So, in short this is what this uh, mechanical switched capacitor TCR. So, we covered this first two. Then the third one we will cover that is TSC TCR. Now, before that one needs to have an idea that what is thyristor switched capacitor. Okay. So, uh, because we know that the basic operating principle of TCR in very detail. So, if we understand that the basic operating principle of TSC that is thyristor switch capacitor, then it would be easier for us to understand their combination that is TSC TCR, which is more sophisticated type of SVC used. Okay. So, let us start with thyristor switched capacitor. thyristor switched capacitor or its acronym is TSC. Now, as per my uh, discussion in this particular course, one may uh, uh, one may think of that simple TSC configuration is something like this we have a bus where this TSC would be placed. We may have a step down transformer, I am skipping that and we also have a bidirectional switch like this. Then we have a capacitor. So, this is a configuration of TSC, but is this a configuration of TSC which will work? So, is this configuration of TSC or can this configuration of TXC work? This is the question that I want to set first. The can this configuration of TSC work? The answer is certainly no, this will not work due to various reasons. Now, what are the reasons that um, uh, uh, for which this configuration will not work? This is I am going to discuss. So, what are the reasons? So, first reason is that if you have this configuration, then Suppose this is this uh, voltage instantaneous voltage at the bus at which this uh, TSC unit is kept and this is what the current uh, drawn by this, this capacitor whenever it is connected to this particular bus. Now, as soon as this uh, thyristor will be turned on, what would be the current that will flow through this particular circuit? This is a, a simple uh, capacitive circuit as if we are basically connecting the circuit to a source and let us consider it is a AC source assuming that the capacitor is initially uncharged. So, therefore, if the capacitor if the capacitor is initially uncharged uncharged then how much current that will flow as soon as we will turn on the switch so the current 
drawn by the capacitor capacitor as soon as the thyristors are turned on will be infinite okay so that is i c t would be infinity when it is turned on so that is what the first reason that we will be having a in very infinite current uh, in theoretical it is infinite current if we assume that this capacitor is a ideal capacitor so there would be infinite current that would flow through the circuit which makes it infeasible second is that when we turn on the switch suppose this is what the voltage waveform and this voltage waveform represents this instantaneous voltage of the bus at which this is placed now what would be this uh, uh, this current that will flow through the circuit as you know this current will lead 90 degree so therefore uh, this current will flow this current uh, drawn by this capacitor will be something like this i of c t now you can see except this uh, capacitor is turned on uh, at the peak voltage they are in any other instant for example if the capacitor is turned on when uh, this voltage waveform at its zero crossing like this this instant like this instant and this is this instant so during that uh, instant this i of c i c t what it will be it will increase from zero to this value and it will uh, keep on increasing because capacitor current can instantaneously be changed so therefore if it happens then uh, d i c d t would be infinity if the turn on instance turn on instance of the thyristor are other than other than the instance when the system voltage system voltage is at its peak okay so there will be infinite um, di dt that would be develop uh, because you see that uh, this i of c t would directly jump from zero to that particular finite value if you operate it uh, any other instant other than this peak value of the system voltage okay so therefore these two are the main bottlenecks for which this configuration will not work okay so we need to change the configuration of tsc so therefore the conclusion is we need to change the configuration of tsc okay so you need to change the configuration of tsc and uh, so so you need to understand that these are the two reasons for which this configuration will not work uh, because no practical current can withstand infinite amount of current no semiconductor switch can instant infinite change of the current infinite amount of di of dt so therefore it is not possible that we will have a capacitor directly switched with some thyristors 
Okay. So, we need some other uh, devices which can control this current, which can control the DIDT across the switch as well. And you know that if we simply connect a inductor, a very small inductor in series with this capacitor, this problem can be elevated. So, so therefore, the practical TSC configuration is something like this. Suppose, this is the bus at which we will connect this TSC unit. Okay. This is the bus at which we will connect this TSC unit. Then we will may have a step down transformer to step down the voltage level. This is suppose the step down transformer. Then we have the bidirectional switch as in TCR. as in TCR and we have the uh, capacitor along with a small inductor or reactor here. Okay. So, as you know this is step down transformer this is thyristor switch. this is the capacitors and this is a very small inductor. This constitutes a practical TSC configuration. This is of course, single line diagram and uh, a practical this three phase TSC uh, configuration will be something different the which I will discuss in the next lecture. Okay. Now, suppose the voltage Suppose, the voltage at the bus at which this uh, TSC unit would be placed. So, the voltage at this bus is V of t. So, voltage of this bus is V of t which is representing a pure sinusoidal wave from V m sin omega t where V m stands for the peak value of the sinusoidal voltage and omega is the frequency power frequency of the uh, system. So, V m is here. peak value of supply voltage and omega is power frequency. Okay. Now, when you energize this circuit with the system voltage whose instantaneous value is V of t, then what would be the current that will flow through this TSC unit? Suppose the current flowing through this TSC unit is I of c, I c of t. So, the current, the current drawn by TSC unit. is I of C T. You can see from the representation that they are instantaneous current. So, this is instantaneous voltage. So, this is instantaneous current. Then the question is what would be the expression? What would be the expression of I C of T? This expression one can derive because this is simple uh, a LC circuit. So, if you consider a LC circuit assuming that there would be certain amount of charge in the capacitor whenever we are turning on these switches, then what would be the expression for the current drawn by this LC circuit. So, usually in my class I asked my student to derive the equation. So, this is not uh, difficult uh, and, but in this particular lecture I will write straight away write down the expression instead of deriving because this is of no use. So, this I of C T is equal to this I peak cos omega t plus theta 
minus n b of c multiplied by v c o minus n square divided by n square minus 1 v m sin theta all right multiplied by sin omega n t minus i of p cos theta this is bit longer equation cos omega n t this is a bit longer equation having lot of different variables now where this i p is peak value of the peak value of current i will come to that uh, this expression for i of p theta is the instant of tsc switching so theta is the angle of the instant of tsc switching bc is susceptance of TSC unit. Okay. Now, omega n is basically representing natural frequency of oscillation. Remember, this is a LC series circuit. So, there will be a natural frequency of oscillation. Okay. And uh, this n is a number which representing the ratio of omega n to omega, which is basically the ratio of uh, natural frequency of oscillation to the power frequency. Okay. Now, what is this? I will come to that. Okay. Now, what are the unknown variables? Uh, what else the unknown variable we have? Huh. This V C O, this V C O representing uh, the initial charge or voltage across the capacitor. Okay. So, this is the voltage at the instant of turning of operation across the capacitor. So, this, this uh, summarize the whole uh, equation. Okay. Now, from this equation one can uh, if we just divide this equation into two part you can see this is a steady state part steady state component okay and these two parts represents transients component transients component and they appear due to the capacitor switching only and that's what i was discussing that uh, the capacitor switching itself is a uh, uh, is a difficult task in view of the initial transients uh, because of the uh, this presence of the some charge in the capacitor even if the capacitor is in initially uh, remain unchanged then also there would be some amount of transients so therefore this tsc operation uh, is to be carefully done so that this transients would be less other the otherwise uh, it may it may create lot of problem uh, in in operation of the TSC. So so one of the uh, goals of this TSC operation is to uh, keep this transient component of this current into a uh, acceptable range or acceptable value. Okay. So how to do that? I'll come to that. But now we'll also discuss this. What is this omega n? as you know this omega n that that is the natural frequency of oscillation it is nothing but 1 upon root over lc okay so if it is so then we can show that n is equal to which is the ratio of omega n to omega it is equal to root of this xc to xl okay so higher this xc represents 
the reactance of the capacitor and XL is basically representing reactance of the this inductor or reactor. Okay. So, this is something one needs to understand. Okay. So, uh, another thing that uh, I should write that this what is this peak value that is peak value of the current. So, this peak value of the current it is its expression is equal to this peak value of the voltage which is V m multiplied by this B c B l divided by B c plus B l where B c is susceptance susceptance of the capacitor and B l is the susceptance of the reactor or the inductor and basically this inductor is uh, so designed that it is its size is uh, lesser than this uh, this capacitor and its basic purpose is to limit this current as I discussed in the last uh, page. Okay. So, uh, its basic function is to limit this otherwise you have to understand at this point that here the role of the reactor is not to absorb the VAR from the system rather during starting it, it limits the current it, it uh, does not uh, the presence of this uh, reactor uh, is helpful to, to keep the uh, initial current drawn by the capacitor to a reasonably uh, acceptable value. Okay. So, that is what the purpose is. So, other than that the main goal is to this reduce the transient if we cannot avoid it completely at least we can reduce it. Now, we will uh, uh, see that theoretically how can we uh, reduce this uh, transient and also we will see practically how can we do so. So, if you look at this equation if I write down this transient component. So, the transient component component of I of C T if I rewrite again this is equal to I of C T transients which is equal to minus N B C multiplied by V C O minus N square divided by n square minus 1 multiplied by V m sin theta okay, multiplied by sin omega n t minus i of peak cos of theta cos of omega n t. So, this was the transient component which I explain over here. Now, how can we uh, make this transient component 0 to make I of C T transients is equal to 0. If you look at these two uh, component, if I have to make it 0, then what I need to do? I can uh, write that V C O can be equated with n square divided by n square minus 1 multiplied by V m sin theta. So, if you can do so then this portion would be 0. So, this is the first condition, but however if you do so this component would be again there. Now, how can we uh, remove this component completely uh, because omega n cannot be 0 it, it is representing natural uh, oscillation uh, frequency of oscillation. So, therefore, I p is cannot be 0 as I have already uh, shown you the expression. So, therefore, cos theta can be made 0. So, second condition is that cos theta can be made 0 which stands for theta is equal to 
how much theta is equal to pi by 2. Okay. So, theta as I, I discuss it is the instant of the switching. So, that means, if we can uh, turn on the switch at the instant which is pi by 2 from the uh, compared to the system peak value. So, that means, we can turn on the switch corresponds to uh, this you know, peak value of the system voltage. So, this means that we need to turn on. So, this stands for this implies that this implies to the fact that fact that the TCSC should, should be turned on when voltage system voltage system voltage reaches reaches the peak values it could be it could be uh, positive peak or negative peak okay so this is this is the instant and this implies to the fact that this implies to the fact that this implies to the fact that the initial charge at the capacitor should be such that should be such that this equation is satisfied, this equation is satisfied. Okay. So, this V C O as I discussed in the last page that it is representing the initial uh, charge across the capacitor or the uh, voltage across the capacitor due to initial charge. So, it should be such that this V C O should be equated with this, this is one condition. Another condition is that uh, we should turn on uh, the switch when the system voltage will reach the peak values. Okay. So, if you can keep these two conditions uh, hold, then only we will avoid the whole transient current, we can make it 0, which is our goal. So, this is theoretically uh, speaking, this is how we can make this transient component 0. Okay. So, thereby uh, uh, your, your system current would be transient free. Okay. But practically, will it be possible? That we will see in the next lecture. Okay. So, practically, uh, this is very difficult to uh, satisfy both the conditions simultaneously. Why it is so? This I will discuss in my next lecture. Then, if we cannot satisfy that, then how can we reduce the transient? This is also an important issue. That also I will discuss in the next lecture. Till then, so, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.